By the end of this video, you will know how to configure traffic using Docker to manage your web traffic, set up reverse proxies, and easily enable HTTPS for your applications. Let's get started. Before we dive in, let's quickly review the prerequisites. You'll need a server or VM running Linux with a public IP address, Docker engine installed on your system, and a domain name. For this demonstration, I've set up an Azure virtual machine and configured the domain dev.softsweb.site with a wildcard entry to allow traffic to manage other subdomains. First, SSH into your server or VM. Now, navigate to the op directory and create a new directory called traffic. Next, create a Docker Compose file with the following content. By the way, you can find all the code and commands in the GitHub repository linked in the description. The image we are using is version 3.10, which is currently the latest stable version. You may want to check Docker Hub for a newer version, depending on when you watch this video. In the command section, the providers .docker option tells traffic to automatically discover and configure services based on Docker labels. It will watch for Docker events and update its configuration accordingly, which is very useful because it means you won't need to restart the traffic container when a new service is added. The providers .file .directory specifies a directory for traffic to load additional configuration files. This can be helpful for defining static routes middleware, etc. We'll configure this directory shortly. With providers.file.watch enabled, traffic will monitor the specified directory for changes and automatically reload the configuration when modifications are detected. The api.insecure option is set to true, enabling the traffic dashboard and API in an insecure manner, meaning it won't require authentication. We will disable this later as it's not recommended for production. Now, on to the ports section. Ports 80 and 443 are used for HTTP and HTTPS traffic, while port 8080 is designated for the dashboard. The volume section allows traffic to communicate with the Docker daemon to discover containers, and the traffic directory is mounted for configuration and certificates. In the network section, We'll use an external network called Traffic for greater flexibility. However, if you prefer, you can create the network directly within the Docker Compose file. Now save and exit from the Docker Compose file. Let's navigate to etc. and create a directory named Traffic. Once we're in that directory, we'll create a certs subdirectory. Now let's create a file called traffic.yml. You can directly copy the content from the GitHub repository linked in the description. Now let's take a closer look at the configuration. In the global section, we specify that we don't want to check for new versions of traffic and that we do not wish to send usage data. This keeps our environment clean and respects our privacy. In the API section, we enable the dashboard and set it to insecure. Please note, that this should be disabled in production environments for security reasons. I've enabled it here solely for demonstration purposes. Next, we configure the entry points. We specify port 80 for HTTP with a forced redirect to HTTPS. This means that if someone tries to access a URL using HTTP, they will be automatically redirected to the secure HTTPS version. Moving on to the certificate resolvers, we define two types of certificates using Let's Encrypt. The staging certificate is for testing purposes, while the production certificate is used in live environments. Be sure to add your email address here to receive important notifications about the certificate, such as expiration dates and other related information. In the provider section, we configure Docker as a provider. This allows traffic to automatically expose our containers based on their labels and utilizes the current file location for configuration. In the HTTP section, 
we define several middlewares to enhance our routing for redirect traffic. The core headers middleware configures cross-origin resource sharing headers, allowing flexible access for different origins, while specifying which methods and headers can be used in requests. Lastly, the rate limiter middleware is set up to control the rate of incoming requests, allowing an average of 100 requests per second with a burst capacity of 15, which helps protect our services from being overwhelmed. Finally, the logging section sets the log level to debug, which provides detailed information for troubleshooting, and specifies the log file path for easy access to log records. Now, save the changes and let's go back to op traffic. First, we'll create the network by using the docker network create command, and then we'll start the traffic container At this point, you can check the traffic dashboard by visiting your domain on port 8080. If everything is configured correctly, you should see something like this. Next, let's configure an actual Docker container to be managed by traffic. For this example, we'll use nginx. Start by creating a new directory, then create a new Docker Compose file within it with the following content. Here, we expose port 8, 222 to avoid conflicts, as traffic is already running on port 80 and its dashboard is on port 8080. Be sure to add the traffic network and, most importantly, include the traffic labels. In the label section, we specify the entry point as Web Secure to enable HTTPS. We also define a host name rule for routing. Basically, traffic will create this new subdomain for us. Then set TLS to true and specify Certer Solver as production to use the production Let's Encrypt configuration from traffic.yml. Now let's start the container and check the web page. Everything appears to be working smoothly and the certificate is valid. You can apply this setup to any other Docker containers. Just be sure to update the label names and the host name. Traffic offers many more advanced configurations so feel free to explore the official documentation linked in the description for more in-depth options. What we've covered here should give you a solid start. If you'd like more tutorials like this, check out my other videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.